We're building a new poundless waterfall feature in our outlet store here in St. Louis, Missouri. We're pretty excited about it. We've got a stream incorporated with a little bend in it. We've got a basin that's not overwhelmingly big that's going to encroach on our landscaping. It's plenty deep, about 42 inches, to account hold plenty of water so when we turn our pumps on, when we fill up the pipe, fill up the stream, our pumps aren't going to run dry. And when we turn them off for servicing or if we decide to put a timer on it, it's not going to overflow the basin and wash out our landscaping around it. And that's a very important thing to figure out and calculate your basin size and your pump sizes and everything else, you visit pondmarket.com and download the Pondless Waterfall free brochure. It's got all that information in there. Now, if you look, we've got our stream here and we've got a gully on each side of it. And this gully, that's what keeps, and I call it a gully, you can call it whatever you want, but it's a straight up side on each side of the stream. That's what keeps the water flowing down to the basin. And that's a very important feature. A lot of folks and some professionals, the first couple times they do it, they don't make that berm so the liner isn't straight up and down and then concealed with rocks and the water goes to the left and to the right instead of back down the basin. Then you're taking a lot of rock, trying to make sides, and it, you end up with 15 tons of rock and 20 gallons of water. It can look very disproportional and, and look bad, to be honest with you. So that's a very important thing. You're going to be able to hide all this with stone, and you'll see that in a later video. Now, if you look too, we've got several, I call them stair steps. Wherever you want falling water or a waterfall, a sheet type waterfall, whether it be that or whether it be water cascading down rocks, you more or less want that stair step. You can see we've got three of them in here. Now, this last one may not be much of a fall because of how our grade's ending up. We'll have to see how that comes out. But if you look at these here, this particular one isn't very tall. So we don't have to worry about splash. Wherever you have a sheet waterfall, the taller it gets, the more you have to worry about splash because that water falls, hits gravel, goes all over the place instead of back down where it needs to be. When they're short like this, you don't have to worry about that. If you look back at this last one, there's some height here. Now you'll notice we've got kind of a bowl or a slope going back towards this fall. And that's so this fills up with water. So when the water comes down, we're going to elevate this slightly. Our water's going to be up here. Our waterfall box will be up here falling in. If we didn't have a pool of water here, it hit the rock and go everywhere. You're still going to have a little splash with the pool of water, but not enough to cause constant splash out and cause you to have to fill this thing up all the time. And let's face it, Pondless waterfalls or pond free water features, if you will, they're the hot ticket if you don't have time to take care of one or you simply do not want to take care of a pond. You don't have the fish, you don't have the filters, you don't have the headache. And I'm in the business of selling ponds, so to me it's not a headache. But if you're not into gardening, it can be. But if you still want that waterfall or stream feature, this is the way to go. The only maintenance you're going to have with one of these is adding water to it every once in a while and maybe throwing in an algae treatment every once in a while. And there's auto fills and other equipment to eliminate those. So really, if there is such a thing as a maintenance-free water feature, this is going to be the closest thing to it.